All right, we are going live. Yes. <laughs> with another episode of TNT. Hopefully it says it's starting, so we'll just play along like it's starting. Yes. All right. We are going <coughs> it is live right now with another episode of TNT. Uh, sorry for the awkward start. It always says starting and then it circles for a minute. So I don't know when it actually starts, but okay. we're live now. We are live. So And we're alive, so that's always a good thing. So I'm here today, obviously, you can see with Pastor Dale, and today we're going to continue talking about identity and, and links with our righteousness, but uh, you know, we'll just see where, where we go today. So okay. I think you said you had a couple things you want to start with? <clears throat> yes, if I can get this tickle out of my throat. Perfect. <clears> throat> um, <laughs> I was praying about uh, being on here today and, and just trying to find some different way of approaching uh, this message. And uh, when I was praying, I suddenly thought of Ozzie Smith, and that's not something I think of uh, you know, on a regular basis. Ozzie Smith, Smith was a famous baseball player with the St. Louis Cardinals. He was their shortstop for a number of years. He was counted as the greatest uh, defensive shortstop mm -hmm. to ever play the game. Mm -hmm. At, at that time. And uh, he made the Hall of Fame. And I was given a baseball that was signed by him or a facsimile machine, whatever. But it said HOF at the end of it. Ozzie Smith, HOF. And it was Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. He didn't identify himself as a major league ball player. He didn't identify himself as a St. Louis Cardinal. He identified himself as a Hall of Famer. In other words, we normally identify ourselves with the thing that's had the greatest impact on our life. We talk about what impact. Now, mm -hmm. it can be negative too. I, I talked with, I've talked with people and the first thing they tell me when they come up for prayer or something like that is, I'm a diabetic. Right. I, right. I have heart problems. And they, they'll, mm -hmm. they identify with their issues rather than what has had a positive impact on their life. Now, <clears throat> One of the great things that can happen to you is that you begin to realize what is more important to you. Now, for me, I could be identified, you know, people say, oh, he's a preacher. But I like to identify myself as a Christian because I believe that's the greatest thing that has happened to me. Out of being a Christian, I simply surrendered to my call. Mm -hmm. And that call was under being a Christian. Yeah. I'd like to read this to you out of uh, Philippians chapter 3. Starting at verse 7, this is out of the CSB translation. He says, But everything that was gained to me I have considered to be lost because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Because of him I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them as dung, so that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own under the law, but one that is through faith in Christ. I, I think mm -hmm. the greatest thing about this is that Paul's saying everything he once thought had value has nothing in value compared to being found in Christ and knowing him. Yeah. And I will tell you that I have to agree with that. You know, I've seen people who have identified themselves with their own abilities. You know, I'm this, I'm that. I, I can do this, I can do that. And at different times, I have done that also, and and maybe in, in explaining something, you know, like uh, somebody would say, well, what kind of drafting did you do when you were in the world, you know, drafting as, as an occupation or part of your occupation? And I'd tell them what I did. I said, I can draw this, I can draw that. Now, my point being is that when we identify with just something that is something we do, we're dependent on that mm -hmm. to provide our identity. Uh, yeah. I think that's yeah. a weak form. Yeah. It's not the greatest thing at all. Well, it has no foundation, has no basis, because that can change in a minute. I mean, I I was a regional manager for a jewelry store, and I really loved that job, and mm -hmm. and it was good, but I identify, you know, that was like my primary identity as a regional manager. Oh, yeah. And then when all of a sudden, I wasn't a regional manager <clears throat> anymore, and it was difficult coming, I'll say down in a position because I identified with that. So even whenever I managed another store, it was not the same. Right. And I had to deal with the thoughts of like, I should be this or I shouldn't be here. Or I, and it was, 
because my identity was a lot was founded in that position. Right. And that isn't a sure foundation. No. And, you know, this is one of the advantages that people who really are in Christ have mm -hmm. is knowing that they have God's identity. God's given them yeah. an identity uh, that Jesus Christ uh, dying on the cross for them and them receiving him provided them all the identity they'll ever need. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that becomes an issue for a lot of people that they they fail to grasp that our greatest identity is found in being in Christ mm -hmm. and then in the privilege of getting to know him and all that he has done for us. Yeah. Uh, I am uh, 71 years old, almost 72, and I'm coming to a place that I realize more and more that God has done such a good work in my life. And not because I'm special, but because he's special. Because of the promise of salvation. Because of the promise of what that salvation means. The healing, uh, uh, prosperity, the blessings of life, mm -hmm. the provisions that seem to be always there. Yeah. I, that's what I'm. That's what I've come to realize, and that's all come about because of Jesus Christ, and my receiving Him. So my greatest identity, if I was going to have something at the end of my name, is uh, CF Christ follower. Mm -hmm. You know that I I have really come to know what it means to have my identity in Christ. I'm I'm not the greatest at it yet, but I've come to know it. Mm -hmm. I've come to realize that's the greatest thing that could ever mm -hmm. happen to me. And you're further than where you were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you you know, we haven't arrived, no. but we've left. Well, and Paul said it well. I've, not that I've achieved the goal, mm -hmm. but I press toward the mark of the high yeah. calling. Yeah. Um, this in Philippians 3, that verse 9 in the Mirror Bible says, and I'm going to leave out, there's a sentence that's kind of just more poetic than anything, but it says, so here I am found in Christ. I was looking in the wrong place all along. Yeah. And then it says, the faith of Christ reveals my identity. Righteousness defines who God believes that I am. Amen. That's so good. This righteousness is sourced in God and endorses the authority of faith. And then in parentheses, it says, faith is a fairy tale if Jesus is not the substance of it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. Oh. So uh, when I was thinking about this, I kept thinking of different you know, things that I've mm -hmm. seen people identify with. Mm -hmm. And like I said, many times people identify with something that's happened to them, not something that they made a choice for. Yeah. You know, I said before you, life and death, uh, Deuteronomy 30, 19, therefore choose life, choose blessing. Mm -hmm. That, you know, uh, it's, it's the idea of making choices. Yeah. And the greatest choice I ever made was choosing Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. <clears throat> boy oh boy it's just a tickle <laughs> yeah well hey also i just want to say if you have questions or comments please put those put where you're watching from uh we just like to see everywhere sure. people are watching from and what we've had people from we had toby from mexico watching the other day we had somebody from india watching uh so i mean we you know just all around the state so we just like to see where we're reaching and where we're going so and if you do have a question please post it so we can answer that for you oh yeah so you know along with our identity is who we you know we we're, we see ourselves in this natural world and then we tend to lean towards natural means of identification mm -hmm. or you know like the word says we're healed but we have a physical situation so we tend to identify with that physical situation waiting for god to heal us mm -hmm. We're trying to obtain something that our identities are, because we've been identified as righteous, we've already been given all the healing we'll ever need. Yeah, the word salvation is powerful. It's sevenfold. It's every aspect of man's life, every interaction that you can ever have. Salvation has got it covered. Mm -hmm. And I know that seems strange, but I think that one of my greatest blessings in my life is that I've come to know that. Mm -hmm. I've really come to know that that I know that I can be uh, having a tickle in my throat, but that doesn't mean that I'm not healed. Right. I can have a, uh, I, I had COVID-19 mm -hmm. earlier this year. Uh, 
but that never once in my mind did I ever allow myself to think I'm not healed. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to come through this. I remember sa mm -hmm. saying to somebody, I'll walk out of this hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, uh, when I said that, you know, they kind of, well, that's a good attitude to have. And I thought, no, that's, yeah. that's what I know because yeah. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Yeah. Now, I'm saying all this so that you understand that I kept identifying with the one who is my savior, mm -hmm. not the one who has tried to curse me. Yeah, yeah. And the one who tried to curse me is ab absolutely Satan. He is the author of sickness, death, and, and uh, uh, poverty. I mean, yeah. it's, it, that's his trademark. That's what he likes to work with to cause people to try to curse God, thinking that God has put this on them. But I will tell you right now, that when we learn to identify with something that's happened for us and not to us, mm -hmm. and it happened for us because we made a choice, that's what starts making a real reality, um, yeah. making things different in our life. Yeah, and our identity has to be founded in what Christ has done for us. Amen. Not what we've done. Right. Otherwise, it's self-righteousness, which equates to nothing. Right. <laughs> it all gets burned up in the end. But, you know, it, it's... It's important to really, that's why it's so important to understand the word Oh yeah. and to get into the word because, you know, you, you know that you've been healed. So mm -hmm. even while you're in the ICU in the hospital, you know, you're healed. Right. Your body's saying something different, but knowing is not the full aspect. You have to know, but you have to believe right. that, that what you've read is for you. Yes. And then you have to speak it. To yeah. activate it, I'm going to walk out of this hospital. I'm yeah. going to live and not die. And, you you know, you have to say those things. Right. And I, I've seen people, again, as... I'll give you this example here for, for me. I have a, a nice doctor. He's a good guy. But he says, you know, you're pre-diabetic. And I go, that means I don't have diabetes. <laughs> and he goes, well... And he leans his head and kind of goes like this. And I said, do you know when you get a credit card and they say you're pre-approved, <laughs> that means you're not approved <laughs> right. until you go through some kind of hoops. They said changes and adjustments. Mm -hmm. And in my case, my blood sugar would have to get up to a certain point that I, before I'd be diabetic. And I, if I keep my blood sugar down under that, I'm not diabetic. And I said that to him. He goes, well, yes, technically that's right. <laughs> And it's just comical to me that some people still identify themselves with something that someone has said to them mm -hmm. rather than what God has said to them. Yeah. In uh, 1 John chapter 5, I believe it says, "Who is belie um, if we believe the report of men, how much sure is the report of God? Yeah. What, a, what a powerful statement that is. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not calling my doctor a liar. I'm just saying uh, it means I don't have it yet. And I'm going to keep that yet in between me and the situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and that's the same way that we ought to see ourselves in Christ. When we're in Christ, that means we're in Christ. We're not pre-in Christ. Mm -hmm. We're not, you know, a, a lot of people don't think we're in Christ until we're dead. Right. Yeah. You know, everything's Once settled. we're in heaven, then that's where it'll it's, happen. It's all yeah. settled. I, I don't need healing in heaven. Right. I don't need I don't need prosperity in heaven. It's all there. Yeah, you won't need to obtain peace. Yes, there because it's already there. You're yeah. in peace. You don't have depression. You're not fighting all these things in heaven. No, right? Yeah. Right. Because now where are you seated? You're in Christ. Yeah, in I heavenly know. places. In heavenly places. <laughs> so my my point is, I I think it's the learning to have the attitude, or learning to have the assurance. Mm -hmm that what God has said about you is true more than what you're dealing with at that present time. Yeah. And I, I know that for some people that is like asking them to gargle peanut butter or something like that. It's, it's, it, just, it just seems so contrary to what they've been taught. But that's the issue. We're, if we're taught by our senses, we're always going to be struggling with faith. We're going to be struggling with hope. Yeah. We're going to be struggling with the fact of a, a, a divine love that loved us so much that he asked his mm. son to die for us so that we could be counted as his children. Yeah. What a powerful th thing. 
But if we go by our senses, we stay out of that realm that God really wants us to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, you said <clears throat> struggles with faith and hope. If you don't have hope, you can't have faith. I agree. Because faith has to have something to give substance to. Right. And if you're struggling with hope, even seeing a way out, then you really, you're struggling with understanding the love of God for you. I agree. And if you don't understand God's love for you, you are in, that's, that's an awful situation. Well, it gets back to, again, what we allow ourselves to meditate on or yeah. what we allow ourselves to think on. Mm -hmm. You see, I... Gosh, I'm giving all these things about me like I was some kind of super saint or something like that. Now, I will tell you that during that time, I have to admit that I didn't have a whole lot of, uh, a lot of spare time. Hey, I was either knocked out, mm -hmm. just wore when out. You're in the or, hospital. In the hospital, yeah, yeah. January, yeah. Just wore out, or I would wake and I would mumble something and then be back to sleep. Mm -hmm. But what I, what I mumbled was something that I believed. With long life, he'll satisfy me. Mm -hmm. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And I, I would go back to sleep. I, that's how weak I was. I'm not trying to make a big deal out of it. But, and then, you know, it was just a struggle. But the struggle was not in the fact that I knew God's love for me. The struggle was, uh, would I have the physical strength to go through this thing? Mm -hmm. And then I began to thank him for strength. I began to thank him for what he has done already in my life and what he has continued to do. And I, I, I just, I just want to keep telling, I feel like I'm telling someone out there who's listening right now that you're going through some things here that seem overwhelming. They, they seem incomprehensible. I mean, it's just too big of a task. Yeah. But God is saying to you, this is the time to trust me the most. This is the time to throw your cares, cast your cares over on me, put them on there. You know, the word there, cast your cares, actually, it means to fling with no thought of direction. Mm -hmm. Just get rid of them and, and put yourself in a position with, uh, of understanding that God says he cares for us and cares about us. So I, I'd like to just let you know how important it is that you begin to identify yourself with the greatest thing that's ever happened to you. If you're a born again believer, identify with that. I'm a believer. I am a born again, spirit filled believer. I'm a, a person who put their trust in Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. I am persuaded of God's love for me because he asked his son to die for me. I'm persuaded of his love for me because he said that everything that he has invested in Christ Jesus he is invested in us. What a powerful mm -hmm. statement. He said, we're sons. We're not stepsons. We're not grandsons. We're not, we're not distant relatives of God. We yeah. are his sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And that's the best news. Amen. <laughs> that means we're in the family. We have the same rights and privileges as Christ, Amen. as our brother. <laughs> Amen. You know? And that if we're in him, then every, that's why we're, we're heirs, but we're co-heirs with Christ. Yes. And so everything that he has available to him, we have available to us. Amen. And, you know, I know people are like, well, it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> well, you're looking in the natural. You're looking on the outside. You need to get looking on the inside in your spirit who you really are. And then let that start speaking forth truth. Instead of saying, does it look like it? Start saying, I know I have it. Amen. It's mine now. It's like, well, how long do I say that? Until you have it. Amen. Um, you know, and our identity is so entwined with those, that, those two words in Christ. And, you know, I, I was reading the mirror Bible, but he says, those are, and I think you've said it before and I've heard other people say it. Those are the two most important words in the Bible yeah. in Christ. And that's, that's who we are. That's where we're at. And that's how we should identify that we are in Christ. So if anything's happening to us that wouldn't be happening to Christ, we need to reject it and not accept it and fight against it because that's something trying to steal our identity, yes. trying to remove us from in Christ to outside of Christ. And I get our identity looking outward rather than looking at him. Right. Jesus said in John 10, 10, mm -hmm. uh, probably one of the most quoted verses amongst all charismatic churches. Mm -hmm. You know, I have come that you may have life and it more abundantly. 
Now I'm saying it differently than the, the scripture. Yeah. But then he says, but the thief comes, but to steal, kill, and destroy. The abundant life compared to stealing, killing, and destroying. Yeah. When we think of the abundant life, we think of health. The greatest gift that mankind could have or a man could have is health mm -hmm. because health gives us the ability to achieve, to do things that we desire. Yeah. It gives us the, the capacity to overcome injury or whatever it may be. We have health. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you right now, uh, I've learned to appreciate health a lot in the last year. <laughs> then the next thing in this is that uh, he comes to steal uh, your finances, your things like this, but the abundant life. When you think of the abundant life, you don't think of, you know, uh, mayonnaise sandwiches. You know, you don't think of, uh, you know, just yeah, barely yeah. getting by or, or just scraping in there or mm -hmm. where, putting putting pasteboard uh, in the bottom of your shoes so that you're not walking on. Mm -hmm. You don't think like that. You think of uh, which pair of shoes do I wear today? Now, you can say that sounds so carnal, you know, because there's people around the world that mm -hmm. have lack. It's where there's lack, there's always a lack of knowledge of who mm -hmm. Christ Jesus is. You look in the countries where there has been opportunity for blessing mm -hmm. and you do not see the poverty levels at the same place. My, one of my favorite stories that was told to me was by a James Jones. He had a friend who was a pastor in Ghana mm -hmm. and Ghana was going through another kind of uh, coup d'etat, you mm -hmm. know, there yeah. was some kind of thing going on and, and the country was in just a mess and... Uh, God told him to start building a, a church. And he said, well, I've only got seven blocks and one bag of uh, pre-mixed mortar, you know, mm -hmm. or concrete, whatever. And uh, he said, build the church. And he said, if you'll start, you'll never run out. And he started in there. And in this city was uh, um, probably half a million people. And... Uh, he was, he was starting to build and he was just getting ready to finish up his last thing. And a lady came riding up on a bicycle with three concrete blocks and gave them to him. And then we got through with those three concrete blocks. The guy came up and said, I've got this bag of mortar that I've opened mm -hmm. and I can't, I can't, you, you know, it'll go bad. It'll, right. Yeah. And next thing you know, it just kept coming. A truck comes by later and says, these are all, um, uh, uh, left over from a job we can't take them back to our our place you know our, mm -hmm. yeah and they dropped them off he never stopped building and he ended up building the church that was 100 by 60. Jeez. that's a big building mm -hmm. six thousand square feet and he built that and you'd say what about the roof people brought by a joist mm -hmm. a metal joist and dropped them off for him he never stopped building his church was one of the most prosperous because he taught his people how to believe for bicycles. And then at that yeah, time, yeah. nobody was wanting to drive a car because a gallon of gas was something like $6 a gallon back then. Yeah, cheaper than California today. Yeah, yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> My point that I'm trying to get at is that he taught them all how to believe for a bicycle. And there were bicycles that had contraptions hanging off the back of them, mm -hmm. big boxes on the front. And the people used them for delivery and yeah. their church prospered. Yeah. My point being over and over again, who do you identify with? They identified with a God who would provide. Mm -hmm. They identified with a God who says, I I'll, I'll be with you. I'll cause you to prosper. I'll be a blessing. Whatever you put your hands to, I'll bless. Mm -hmm. They identified with that. I'm asking you today just to start realizing the importance of who you want to identify yeah. with. Yeah. And recognizing if you had, there's there's two, I'm gonna say there's two things pulling on you or drawing you, wanting to draw you closer. Yeah. You have the you have God, and you have the world, yeah. the enemy, and he's oh the enemy's always trying to pull you away from God. God's always trying to pull you towards Himself. Yes. And if you allow physical, natural, carnal things to be your main identifier, your main, the main attraction. Everything in that world leads to death, destruction, steal, killing, and destroying. Right. But if you turn and face God and you say, this is the direction I'm going, he's going to bring you towards life 
and that life more abundantly. Amen. So may realize you're making a choice. That's you said the scripture earlier from Deuteronomy. Yeah. I said before you life or death. There's no middle ground, there's no gray area, there's no third option. No. It's life or death. So whatever you're choosing, you're making one of those choices all the time. And think about this here. The next part of that verse says blessing or cursing. Mm -hmm. Bless. I've said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life yeah. that you and your seed may live and prosper in the land which I have given them. Yeah. Over and over again, if we keep reminding ourselves that as mm -hmm. this is, there's two choices, not multiple choice. It's mm -hmm. binary logic. It's, yeah. it's yes or no. And if we keep identifying with Christ, every time we do that, we, we begin to add another block to our building that he says, if you'll start building, you'll never run out. Well, that's what I want you to see, that you're starting to build every time you put yourself in agreement with what God says about you. Every time that you say that, every time you declare it openly and completely. I, you know, I, I got to the point where I was saying it to the nurses and the nurses would just shake their head and go, well, that's nice. And then this one, I had a few that said, I believe that. I really do believe that. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, the point being is that I became my, it became my anthem. It became my declaration. It became, I, I probably said that more than I said anything else during that whole time. Uh, you know, outside of, could I have a glass of water, you know, or something like that. But I mean, it was just that powerful all the time. And that's something that happens to a believer when they begin to identify with Christ mm -hmm. rather than their condition. You know, like I said, I've had my little argument with my doctor. He says, you're pre-diabetic. I said, that means I don't have it. And he goes, well, uh, you know, it, it, when you do things that confound people uh, and make them question, you know, how they say things, then, you know, it puts you in a position where you are setting the tone a believer should be assertive in their faith. They should be assertive in their statements of faith. They ought to have that confidence in the fact of what God has said. If we identify in Christ, when I tell folks I'm in Christ, that means they'll say, does that mean you're a believer? What does that mean? I say, it means I'm a believer. But it means that in God's eyes, he doesn't see me by myself. He sees me as part of Christ. Mm -hmm. He sees me as a co-equal yeah. to Christ mm -hmm. because of what Christ, Jesus Christ, has done for me. Yeah, think about that, a co-equal. Yes. Oh. That, that's a, I mean, if you're religious out there, that just kind of your <laughs> made your head spin around. But it's true, and I, I just want to, I want to read that, a couple of verses with that, verses 19 and 20 out of Deuteronomy 30, because yeah. He says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Yes. Like he's telling you what to choose and why. It's not because he's trying to make you, but he knows what's best for you and he wants what's best for you. He says, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. See, I think so many people think that their choices just impact them. Oh, no. It, it impacts generations behind. That's. There's some people that say, well, I don't need to go to church, but I'm going to send my kids. That is not the message. Now, I'm great. Send your kids. Let let the word get into them as much as possible. But if they see you living contrary to what you're telling them, that that doesn't, their identity is mixed up because they're trying to understand who they need to look to. And if you are unsure of who you are and you're not living out of your right identity, that is, that's passed down. Yes. There was a, a study done a long time ago on two individuals. One was a very uh, violent, common criminal. And another was a uh, professor at Yale. And they followed their descendants mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. And it went, I think it went four generations afterwards. And out of that, there was something like dramatic impact upon this one family. It was bank robbers and murderers mm -hmm. and all of that in that one family. And the other one ended up with ambassadors, um, uh, military men, uh, high, uh, many ministers of the gospel, mm -hmm. uh, doctors. Mm -hmm. And out of this one family, there was like only one or two that ever did anything that was 
not not violent or something right, like right. that or you know so my point being is that your choice in life will have an impact on the generation coming after you because you know you could say well, that was just a bad family no there was somebody at the beginning mm -hmm. who made a bad choice yeah. and when they made that bad choice it began to follow in that yeah. that you could imagine the word said yeah. to the children oh yeah you're just like your grandpa you're just like your dad you're just like you know, it's just a part of who we are, we, yeah. and all of that. And the, on this side over here, on the good side, you had people going, you know, uh, you can do it because, you know, if your grandfather could do it, we know you could do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have the ability in you and opportunities. And none of them ever were, on this one side, were like massively rich. It wasn't that they chose it. They kept choosing lives of service. Right. Mm -hmm. And my point being is that, they saw themselves as blessed for an opportunity to be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. And that's the choice that we want to make. That's the choices that we want to give to our children. And it's going to come out of the fact of how we see ourselves as God's child, mm -hmm. not as God's somebody he's stuck with. Oh, there he is again. Okay, come yeah. on. You know, when they come into heaven, we're not, there's nobody going to be going, you barely made it. Come on in. Yeah. It's not going to have that. You know, it's going to be something where we recognize that we are part of a massive family, of multicolored, multi-generational, multi-this, mm -hmm. and that socioeconomic and all that kind of stuff that people are concerned with. All of that goes away. We'll see ourselves as brothers and sisters. We'll see ourselves united under one person. Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who in turn takes everything that we've done, we cast our crowns at his feet, yeah. he gathers them all up. I want to tell you, that's going to be a massive, wild-looking thing to see this one man pick up everything and bring them and lay them at the feet of his Father. And the Amplified Bible says that, and this is one of those verses that gets me every time, that he may be our all in all. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you, that I look forward to that. I mean, I am excited about that day. I can't wait. I want him to have, I want my crown, you know, and not that I'm so special, but I don't want to have a little tiara. I got too big of a pumpkin head for that. <laughs> I want to have a crown and I want it, when it's cast at Jesus' feet, it goes clunk. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's not ping, but clunk. And then all of that gathered up. I think that's the way we all should think. I want to live out this life and I cannot live it out unless I identify with the one who provided it for me. The greatest thing that's ever happened to me was I got born again in May, uh, March 27th, 1973. That's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And you know, when I have that understanding, everything else, I've got... I love uh, a lovely daughter that we adopted. I've got two sons that I love, eight grandchildren, a wife that I, I, I love and adore. And I've been called into the ministry and none of those things, as great as they are, compare to what happened to me those many years ago. And the good news with, let's say you are in a family who's, been on a bad family or whatever that, that you, there's Just terrible choices yeah bad choice it can stop with you amen amen because when you get in christ now you make different choices different life choices that life and that abundance and the prosperity that he talks about in here and it says verse 20 goes on to say that you it, verse 19 ends with so that you and your descendants may live and that doesn't mean just exist it means that abundant life. Mm -hmm. It says that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days. Amen. And that you may dwell in the land which was, uh, dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you say, well, I don't need to go live in Israel. No, the, now the land is the promises, all yes. the promises, because that land was promised to him. So, that's a type and shadow of the promises of God in the new covenant yes. for us. Excellent. So we don't have to go and possess a physical land. Right. We go to a spiritual promise. Right. That we can, our faith takes from this 
spiritual and brings it into the tangible. Yes. Healing, prosperity, peace, joy, all of these different things. Mental stability. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, that's something people fight. That's one of the biggest things I think right now. And um, Well, the reason why is they've looked at what we've gone through in the last two years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and if, if you just take, uh, let's say, the last... Let's say since 2001, since 9-11, mm -hmm. people born from 2000 on have lived in a heightened state of anxiety, Yes, a heightened state of security, a heightened state of policing, you know, and all that, and, and the media and stations, and it's all over all the time. And if you miss it on TV, it's on TikTok, it's on uh, YouTube, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram. So there's always all these resources to show you how worried you should be. Right. And so if we're always looking at that for how we are to be, we're going to be a mess. I, I think it was 2008, 2009. I used to listen to, um, you know, political talk shows all the time. I had my lineup whenever I was, and I traveled a lot. I drove a lot. So I was in my car a lot. Uh, I was in Chicago. So, you know, a 10 mile trip could take an hour. So, you know, I just knew I was going to be in the car. And I'd listen to these and man, I just, I was angry. I was bitter. I was upset. The love of God was not evident in me towards certain people. So I had to make the decision. I just shut it all off. Same here. I shut it all because I, I was like, I, it's not good for me. It's not healthy for me. I could feel like just my blood pressure. I mean, I was identifying with, I'm at odds or I'm an enemy of these people. Mm -hmm. And that's not what God called us to be. Amen. So I had to shut that off. And I, I don't hardly listen to any news. I don't listen to too much. I'm, I try and be as single-minded as I can. I try to be so narrow-minded, both eyes can be open looking through a keyhole. <laughs> I want to have everybody know that when they see me, they're seeing, they're going to hear, they're going to know the love of God. You may hear a little baseball talk out of me occasionally, mm -hmm. but... Most of the time, it's going to be God, His love, His grace, and what He's done for those who put their trust in Him. Yeah. And that's that's the good news. Is that's available to everyone. Amen. It's not because we're pastors. Oh, no. And it's... He didn't he didn't die to make me a pastor. I, I <laughs> he, was just thinking he about... He died it. to make me a son. That's right. I was just thinking, you know, I'm no longer the pastor of the Hope City Church. I, I'm... I'm here to help serve mm -hmm. him, and uh, I have a different calling now, different responsibility. But if it was just for pastors, I'm out of luck then because I'm right. I'm no longer a pastor. But I don't see it that way at all. I see in the fact that I know that I have a call. I also know that I'm his son. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to be answerable to my call, I need health. I need strength. I need the things that he's promised, and that's what I remind him of. And then the other is that I'm his son. And as his son, I have every privilege. Uh, Greg, my uh, older son, he comes to our house and he, he will do this almost invariably. He will walk to the refrigerator and open up the door. And the reason why I think that's so funny is that, and yet it's kind of cool, is that he knows he's my child. He has refrigerator privileges. Now, if some stranger walked into my house, and maybe even a person that I, you know, know, and we invited them over, and they just walked over and opened up the fridge, I would think, well, that's kind of rude, you know, <laughs> because they're not my child. Mm -hmm. Now, with Greg, not a problem. Now, the issue that I'm trying to get across is that I want you to see that you're God's child. You have refrigerator privileges, mm -hmm. and that you should see yourself being able to gather anything and everything that he has promised. Mm -hmm. Now the issue comes whether or not you'll believe it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the See, knowledge is where it begins. You can't believe unless you know. Right. You can't know unless you've heard. So right. you have to hear it, then you have to know, you have to get an understanding of what you're hearing. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's where it stops with a lot of people. It becomes an intellectual knowledge. They intellectually understand it, they get it. Great, but they don't believe it. And you say, well, how do you know they don't believe it? Because they're not speaking it. 
because action always follows belief. In fact, if they're not speaking the truth, then and they're going to speak something else. They might know it, but they don't believe it, and that don't that not believing it is producing death. It's producing <laughs> wrong words, wrong actions. You'll hear a lot of the people that know it, but have not can got to the point where they're believing. You'll hear a lot of yeah, buts. Mm -hmm. I understand that, but I know what you're saying, but and 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 Billy Goat Faith is never going to get the job done. You know, but and everything. You're going to have to get yourself to the place that you come in there and you look at your body, even if it's sick, mm -hmm. and saying, "Body, you've got to come around and line up with the Word of God." You've got to. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean you stop taking medicine or you stop doing any of those things, going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you're dealing with type 2 diabetes, it doesn't mean you say, by faith, I can eat Twinkies all day and it not cause my blood sugar right. to grow. That's crazy. That's not what we're saying here at all. But you can start beginning to speak to your body that it's starting to line up with the Word of God mm -hmm. and He'll start showing you what choices you need to make. Remember... It almost always comes back to your choices, yeah, yeah. what you choose. Choosing life or death. You know, I, when I eat, I've been choosing to eat salads with grilled chicken in them uh, rather than, a, you know, a hamburger, french fries, and <laughs> uh, cheesecake for dessert. You know, I, I just make those choices. It's choosing. And I over and over and over again, I see people who don't want God to do something that they don't have to. Yeah, They don't have to make a choice, but you will always have to do this because God put that responsibility on us. It is something that he wants us to do. It's a part of our soulish man. Mm -hmm. He wants us to renew our soulish man that it's lining up with what he says about our lives. Yeah, And that's, we're to line up with what he says. Yes. So, you know, you can, you can say like something, for example, like, you know, I, I've been diagnosed with diabetes, mm -hmm. but the word says I'm healed. Yes. Most of the time when somebody doesn't truly believe it, they'll say, well, I'm healed, but I've got diabetes. Yes. It's opposite. Right. So whatever you end on is really your true belief is not an always, but a general yeah. kind of way to identify people's speech their beliefs and you know what it, it, I, I we just watched a um, um faith school last night from keith moore an episode and he was talking about people in this situation where they you know well i've got faith for this so i'm gonna stop taking my medicine and then you know they end up in the hospital or you know they i mean i'm healed my eyes are healed they throw their glasses down and they, they go on that. and they go and drive their car and they have a wreck you know I didn't have a wreck. yeah so it, it's you know, it's like, well, okay, faith says you're healed, but did God tell you to take your glasses off and throw yeah. away? Or did God tell you to stop taking your medicine? And the the way to tell if he told you or not is, did it work or did it not? Years ago, and this is a long time ago, uh, I got hold of the faith message. I was 27, 28 years old. I got hold of the faith message, and man, I mean, I went, I just, I was up to here in the faith message. And uh, I uh, just was excited. And I, I, at that time, I was 20, between 2160 and 2200 in my right eye. And my glasses were so thick that if I turned my head slightly, it would cause, and they were so arched or mm -hmm. mirrored, whatever you call it, concaved or convexed, whatever. <laughs> and that when I turned my head, my eye would disappear. It looked like I had a hole all the way through my head. It was pretty creepy. People mm -hmm. would kind of do it like that. So I tried to make sure I always looked at the person I was talking to straight on, you know. And uh, my left eye was not too good, but it wasn't near as bad. And uh, I took my glasses off. You know, I'm putting my glasses, I'll never wear them again, you know. And um, that's what I said. And I went out driving. And I, I nearly ran over an old man on a bicycle. I didn't, I didn't hit him or anything like that. But if there wouldn't have been a person in the car with me yelling, there's an old man on the bicycle. <laughs> I would have probably hit him because I couldn't see him. Yeah. Now, my point after that, I I said, Father God, I'm not trying to be stupid, but I've got to do this right. You're going to have to show me. Mm -hmm. And it came about when I heard a testimony where a guy said, he said, I'd put on my glasses and say, oh, thank you, Father. This is the last day I'll ever have to wear mm -hmm. these glasses. Yeah. 
and he'd just do that every day. Well, it was that was the situation I began to confess. This is my last day of wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. This is my last day. About uh, three months later, I was healed. And to this day, I'm just wearing, uh, these are bifocals, but they're clear up at the top, and they're just readers at mm -hmm. the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was 27, they told me I had the eyes of a 70-year-old. When I was 62, they told me I had the eyes of a 40-year-old. I say God's done a great work in my mm -hmm. eyes. But I was one of those people that put away that. I tried, trying to do it thinking that was a display of my faith. My faith should not have been in my action, but his action. Yes, yes. What he promised. So I went back to his promise. Mm -hmm. By his stripes, I am healed. And that's where I made the change. I will tell you that if you can get yourself to make your statement of who you identify with, as your number one statement, yeah. I identify with Christ. Uh, Jesus, Dale Culbertson, Jesus follower, mm -hmm. you know, uh, CF, Christ follower, however you want to say it. You know, just getting that, like Ozzy Smith, mm -hmm. Ozzy Smith, HOF, you know, yeah. Hall of Famer. He did it with the greatest thing that ever happened to him. And that's what I'd like for you to understand, that God wants you to do that same way with him. If you do that, you're going to start seeing changes in your life. Mm -hmm. And if you look down in Ephesians 3, verse um, 15, I'm going to read out the Mirror Bible, uh, but because it talks about identity, it just wraps it up really well. But it says, we who have discovered our perfect righteousness have our thoughts anchored in Christ. Amen. See, if your thoughts aren't anchored in Christ, you're not going to see yourself as righteous. Right. Your thoughts are anchored in your performance, and then you know you're not righteous. Therefore, you keep producing unrighteousness. But it says, if you still see yourself as imperfect or imperfect righteous, God will reveal to you that you're wasting your time to imagine that you can become more accepted and righteous than you already are. Amen. So identify with his righteousness. It's not your righteousness. It's his that he's given to you. He, it, there's no second. There's no take backs. There's no... Like, oh, I made a mistake. Let me have that back. No, it's he has faith in us to be who he's called us to be. Amen. And if he believes in us, who are we to doubt God? Amen. That's the height of arrogance to say, sorry, God, you're wrong. Well, it's the height of stupidity. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to be, I'm going to be a little more rough on that. But it, we see people making, and, and bear with me, they make stupid choices mm -hmm. and they expect God's results. And I'm going to tell you right now, the number one choice that you need to make every day mm -hmm. is that you're going to bask in his righteousness. Yeah. Just, this is what was given to me, the righteousness which God gave. Did you know his righteousness carries a glory with it? Because he said in John, the first chapter, he says, my glory I have given unto mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And then in John 17, 22, we have a, Another great exchange. Now, God said that to Jesus. My glory I have given unto him. And then he talks about it in John 17, 22, where he says, Jesus said, the glory which you have given me, I have given yes. to them. Yeah. I, I tell you what, you'd say, I don't feel very glorious. It doesn't matter how you feel. It's got, you've got it. And like I've said for years, and I know it's corny, but uh, which would you rather you know, know? That you feel like you have a million dollars? Or you have a million dollars. Yeah. You know you have it. Well, you, I'd rather know like I have a, a, a million dollars than feel like I have. The reason why, feelings change. But knowledge is something that I can go and take a look at. Mm -hmm. uh, I will tell you right now, uh, I know in whom I have believed. Mm -hmm. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him until that day. Yeah. I, I will tell you that when we start knowing our salvation rather than just feeling it that's why you know jumping real high on a sunday morning is not as impressive to me as walking it out monday through saturday yeah and i'm not trying to be a down player on you know being excited and joyful in church i'm not trying to do that at all i mean i'll lift my hands and glorify god uh, with the best of them you know or worst of them however you want to think about it but my point being is that I want to live this life in such a way, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 
that anyone can see that I love God and I love them. Yeah. I don't always succeed, but it doesn't keep me from trying. Yeah. So identify with who God says you are. Amen. Get to know who you are in Christ. And just in the book of Ephesians, if you read that, just highlight, circle, underline, whatever. Every time it says in Christ, in him, with Christ, joined with, or something. However it's saying that you're in Christ or with Christ, it's a lot. There's in the New Testament alone, there's 158 promises that are in him, in Christ, in Jesus, mm -hmm. or with him. Mm -hmm. 158. That's a lot. That's a lot. And they all pertain to you. Amen. So don't leave any of them out. Amen. Amen. Brother Kenneth Hagin has a book uh, called In Him. It's just a little mini book. little mini book. And, uh, you know, if you want one of those copies, I'm going to put this on a, on a spot here. I'll, I'll mail it to you directly. We have them here at the church at, uh, and at Hope City. And uh, if you'll send us just mm -hmm. a request and an address... We'll get them to you. Yeah, just direct message me or, or the church and we'll get that to you. Or if you're here on Sunday, you can just go to the Welcome Center. We'll have them. I'll have a, a stack of them down there to hand out as well. So, But you got to watch TNT to know that they're available. That's exactly right. So show up, say, I watch TNT and I got it and you can have it. So, Amen. Um, any final words, anything? Well, I, I, I keep going back to Ozzy Smith. I know it sounds crazy, but... Uh, I, to see that image of him, I imagine the first time he wrote HOF on the, on a, uh, following his name, I, I imagine he, he just almost broke down. I, it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that sometimes if we could just, if we could have a little, you know, G, Jesus follower and JF or CF Christ follower at the end of it, that we could just see ourselves with that kind of, commitment to the very best thing that's ever happened to us. I think it would make a big difference in how we see ourselves. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, that's why we have these TNTs just to get a little bit deeper, a little bit more involved in or into the word so that we can help help you where you're at. Honestly, I always get something from it. Amen. Same. And it, it's so it's good just to go through it. But um, do you mind closing us out in a word of prayer? No, I'd love to. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we're speaking to hearts of people that, Father God, that many of them already know who they are in Christ, but maybe they, they've had such battles mm -hmm. that would try to take them away, cause them to question your goodness. Father, I speak right now to them, and I, I speak blessing over their lives right now that they would come back to the knowledge of Christ, come back to a understanding the greatest thing that's ever happened to them was the day they were born again. And out of that born again experience, everything they need in life has been provided through Christ. So Father, we thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he has given us everything and that you count us as co-equals with him. We are seated in him in heavenly places and that you have granted us all of this. Father, I speak to those that are questioning your love, and just reminding them that what they're going through, they will go through. Yeah. It's not the end of the road. It's not a dead-end can canyon. It's a valley, Father God, and they'll go through it and come out the other side. Father, I thank you that we have that assurance that you are there for us and that you never leave us nor forsake us. Father, I thank you for that. And I speak blessing it now to all who are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, it's been another episode of TNT. Uh, join us next week. Uh, I believe I have uh, Pastor LaVon Dozier with me on Tuesday. So looking forward to that. And we're probably going to still be talking about identity. So um, it's a topic you can talk about for a long time. So. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great day. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy Memorial Day off. Hopefully you're off with family and friends. God bless you all. Bye-bye.